So, in this video we're going to be having a look at 5 awesome add-ons for Godot. Let's get started! The first add-on we're going to be having a look at is called Kyodo, which is Godot but downwritten with a Q. And that Q stands for Quake, which is a very influential first-person shooter from the 90s. So, Kyodo can be used to import Quake maps directly into Godot which can be useful if you want to recreate Quake inside of Godot, but where the real power of this plugin lies is in the fact that you can import custom Quake maps. To do that, you can use a Quake map editor like Trenchbroom. So then the workflow becomes, you create a map inside of Trenchbroom, and then you can use Godot to import it into Godot. But enough talking, let's have a look at this thing in action. Here, I have a scene with the add-on installed. I've also instantiated a Kyoto map. And this is that same scene inside of Trenchbroom. Now let's add some geometry. You can click and drag to create a shape and then hold shift to raise up a face. Go to the faces tab, you can give it a texture. Let's go for a stone texture. If we then hit save inside of Trenchbroom and then hit the full build button inside of Godot, it shows up and there we go. Then the workflow is pretty fast. But some of you may ask, why not just use Blender? Well, Blender is used for a really wide variety of things. And Trenchbroom is built from the ground up for level design. Let me show you some features that could really speed up your level creation workflow using Trenchbroom. Well, my favorite feature in Trenchbroom is that you can hold shift to move a face and that you can also hover over an edge and move faces that you can't see. This really helps with quickly creating shapes in the right shape that you need. Another reason you might want to go for this workflow is that it has really nice snapping tools. You can snap per pixel, you can snap per two pixels, eight, 16, 32, basically every power of two. Another neat feature is the built-in UV editor. You can easily click a face and then change its rotation, the texture, and the scaling. You also have your basic Blender editing tools like moving edges and moving individual vertices. There also is a knife tool. And another tool that's really cool is the brush tool. Brushes are basically all the shapes that you draw. With this tool, you can draw a shape on any face that you want and then extend it outwards. So, that was my trench room sales pitch. So, this modeling style is not suited for every style of game. It's more suited for low poly and retro style games. But you can also use it to grey box a level for a more high poly level. This is a clip of me putting together a little gate in about 20 minutes or so. I often kind of struggle with this art style to not make it look like Minecraft, but you can use actual Quake maps as inspiration. And this is the gate inside of Godot. So just so you know, Godot also automatically generates collision shapes for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, and up Kyoto, let's move on to the next add-on. The next one is called Dialogic, created by fellow YouTuber Emilio. Dialogic lets you really easily create dialogue for your games. And it can be set up in a couple really simple steps. So first, after you installed the add-on and enabled it, you will get a Dialogic tab at the top here. Then you will want to create a character and you can give that character a name and give it a couple portrait images. Then you need to create a theme for your text boxes. I left everything here on the default settings, but you can tweak a ton of things to make them unique. And then you'll need to create a timeline. This is where all the dialogue happens and you have a ton of different choices for your dialogue at the side here. 
And then as a last step to add the dialogue to your scene, you'll need to go to the add-ons folder and then the dialogic folder. And in there, there's a dialogue scene. And you can just drag that into your scene. And then you need to select the dialog box and select the timeline. If we don't save the scene and run it, you'll see that it works. So this is a really simple rundown of how it works, but Emilio has multiple tutorials on his channel that go more in depth. This add-on just makes it so much easier to create dialogue between multiple characters. And you can do a bunch of different things with it like give the player a choice, and those choices will matter in the dialogue. You can also store variables for later, execute code and use sound effects, and you can choose text effects, like the shaking text you see right here. Be sure to check this one out if you're working on an RPG. So the next one is another one of my favorites, called Smart Shape 2D. With this add-on, you can create 2D curved terrain similar to what you see in Rayman Legends or Hill Climb Racing. With this add-on, you can create so-called open shapes, which can be used for platforms. You can create a curve and then manipulate the curvature using Bezier handles. You can also create closed shapes for bigger chunks of terrain. What's also pretty neat is that you can set up materials that automatically change depending on the angle of your terrain. It also adds a node that lets you snap objects to the terrain. And it sets up the collision polygons for you automatically. So with all of this, you can create some pretty cool stuff, like a hill climb racing clone or a Sonic fan game. Oh, and uh, yes, I will be creating a hill climb racing tutorial. So if you would like to learn how this add-on works, I already have a 20 minutes in-depth video on how to set up everything. The next add-on is a lot simpler than the other add-ons I've shown so far. It doesn't even have its own icon yet, but don't be fooled, it's a really useful add-on. It's called Editor Debugger, and it lets you inspect Godot elements in the editor, similar to how you can inspect elements in your browser. So for those who don't know yet, the Godot editor is basically a game running on top of the Godot engine. The entire editor is built using control nodes. These control nodes are also available to you. Sometimes you might come across an element in the editor that you might want to use in your game but you don't know which control node it is. For example, I had that with the rotation degrees right here. It is a value and then it has a slider, but I couldn't find a node with that slider. So using the editor debugger add-on, you can hit F12 on an element and then inspect it, similar to how you can do that in your browser. And it will show that it's an editor spin slider. But this control node is prefixed with editor, which means it's not available as a regular control node. But all the other nodes, for example, an HBox container, a line edit, are also just regular control nodes you can use. So if you find something cool in the editor, use the editor debugger. So for the last add-on, let's have a look at an add-on called height map terrain. Height maps are usually an image or a 2D array in which the values or the brightness of the pixels correspond with the height of your terrain. From this data, you can generate a 3D mesh and you can manipulate that array or image to create the terrain that you want. With this add-on, you can do exactly that and more. You can simply add an HTRA node to your scene and then you can start drawing on your map using the toolbar above. You have a bunch of tools to your disposal, like raising the terrain, lowering it, smoothing it, and things like simulating erosion from rain. It's a scene I've put together, mostly using textures that come with the demo for this add-on. We also added some extra stuff like trees and rocks. So one of the best ways to make your terrain look nice is to use different textures. For example, here on the side of this hill, 
they can use more of a rock texture to make it look more steep. You can also use textures like dirt to make some parts blend together better and make it look more natural. There are a bunch of things you can tweak, like the slope limit on which you can draw, the brush size and the opacity. Another thing you can do is use the vertex color brush to make some parts look darker. For example, the side of the water here. I made it a little darker to make it look like the water touches it. And you can also change the color of places where there's lots of vegetation. Speaking of vegetation, you can add an edge terrain detail layer and you can draw meshes on the terrain like grass. You can select them down here in this menu and then you can draw your mesh on the terrain. If you want to have a natural looking starting point for your map, you can use the built-in generator. Here are a bunch of different parameters you can tweak to get a nice and natural looking starting point for your map. One thing to note is that this add-on doesn't support tunnels and overhangs. I will go over how you can do that in a different video. And that's all I'm going to show you today. There are so many more add-ons I would like to show you guys, but since my wrist still hurts and this video is taking forever to edit, I'm just gonna split it up into multiple videos. I hope you enjoyed all of this content as much as I enjoyed making it. And I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Hopefully that won't take as long as this one. See ya.